moved forward and uh, I don't know exactly when Lita Lewis turned it over, but Lita Lewis left the New York area several years ago and my guess is that's when she turned it over to Karen. I, it depends on how knowledgeable. I know Lita got advice early on from Lowry Sims. I don't know how much it was a book. Uh, there was an, a, a dealer named Eric Robertson who was very helpful to me now. He's an African art and African American art dealer in New York. When King Kellum Gallery did the show in 1979, I think, 90, 89. Yeah, they said this was the show they wanted to do. Eric Robertson was the owner of many paintings in that show. So my guess is that he worked with Rita early on. There's a lot to learn. There's a, a, the whole world is more receptive in a way to, to various aspects of artists. Everybody in this country realizes how limited our knowledge is now of who was doing what when. So there's a eagerness to kind of catch up and learn what we don't know that wasn't there in the 70s. I mean, Lita Lewis would have had a much harder time in 1979 than she would have today. And so, for every reason in the world. I'm just stunned that they hold on to it. It's amazing that they held on to it. And everything else, the library is fantastic. Just keeping it together. I mean, I was married to a painter. I'm a professional. I still have to figure out how to deal with the estate that I have to oversee, and that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm not doing any more shows. It's a big, big, big job, and if you don't have the knowledge and the experience and the contacts, but the resources. You, right? and the resources, it's huge. It's immensely expensive when they care. There's money involved? Yeah. There's money involved? Yeah. The There's money involved if you, you know, I mean, Lewis paintings are, are, are very expensive now. They were very expensive. That's one more ago. question. The collector situation for now that Lewis has changed the money, yes? Are there major collectors now in the picture? Yes, but there have been the major prices have gone up. The prices have gone up. Well, you know, I forget what year Swan started their African American auctions. 10, 15, let's say 15 years, I think 2007, actually. It's around 2007. That's helped both the, the, the auction market has brought prices up. It's put the names of many people out. That is weren't, the that's the most recent, I think, of the yeah. yeah. cover. Um, you know, having it. I love down the prices. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they've changed a lot in the time that I'm working. I mean, an exhibition like this, everyone, you know, two years ago, everyone was, who knew about the exhibition would say, go buy Norman Lewis now because the prices are going to change. Well, they changed before the exhibition went up. They changed for Bearden. When the Bearden, I mean, Bearden's market was much better. They changed. You have a, a, a retrospective with a catalog with, you know, Lewis interested CBS Sunday morning enough to do a special. I mean, that was fantastic that they did that. But so many more people came to the show after that. So, you know, the weekend after CBS Sunday morning, suddenly the whole world was there. It's complicated, and the name has to get out there. Hi. I'm Ellie Paul, the past people I've seen a little about me. Um, in 1983, as museum director, I did a show called celebrating contemporary American and African American art. Mm -hmm. And I had about six or eight of Norman Lewis's works, but they were all abstract at that time. And I'm an art historian. I had no access to his figurative works before that. My experience with other artists is that when they went from one type of art to another, to, there was something dramatic in their life that took place where they actually moved into another way of working. And I was wondering about Norman, since I don't know that part of his life, if there was something that took place where he absolutely went into the abstract world. Well, as I said, I don't feel like he did absolutely go into the abstract world, and I feel like he started in the abstract world. I'm not aware of any 
radical change. And we had a section of the show called 1945, because that was the year. The war ended. Maybe, you know, he was more downtown. Abstraction was more in, in, in the air. He was not only active in the Harlem community, he was very close to Ad Reinhardt and the artists downtown. So he knew what was happening everywhere. Yeah, that's true. And I think that's part of the complication of the work. I don't think there was, I mean, Roscoe went gradually. He went gradually the same way Roscoe went to Kuning went gradually. I don't think of there being anything radical that changed any of those artists. And he was involved with, he, he was going to these shows. I, I said, I never met him, but I would be willing to bet there wasn't an exhibition in New York that Lewis didn't go to. There wasn't an art book published. And after the war, there were more art books published than during the war. So I think the fact that it was 1945 and what happened with the war, but that was with all these guys. I'm down. You know, I mean, there's no well, they didn't all go back and forth, but he did go. I can ask you a question. Um, one of the things I, I got out of the 